On April 2nd, Adele Mercier, Associate Professor of the Queen's University Department of Philosophy in Canada, commented in reply to Alison Tiemann's comment on a Queen's University paper letter to the editor. Alison had responded to the letter, in which the author argued that men's issues discussion shouldn't take place outside feminist oversight with information and statistics that feminists ignore when choosing to demonize all men as potential rapists while denying female perpetration. Adele's response specifically targeted Allison's discussion on sexual abuse of boys in juvenile facilities in the U.S., where a 2012 Justice Department study found that 95% of them reported female perpetrators. Adele responded with exactly the same types of rape apology that feminists accuse the general public of making to excuse raping women and girls. Check out her final comment. Dear Allison, I know that statistics can be hard to interpret, but you need to learn to read before you spread misinformation into the stratosphere. You said 95% of abused boys in juvenile facilities reported being attacked or coerced by female staff. This is false. Reread Google Sexual Victimization in Juvenile Facilities reported by Youth 2012. Sexual victimization is there defined as all sexual activity with facility staff. And the numbers are that among males in juvenile facilities, 5.2% of male youth engage in unauthorized sexual activity with male staff. 89.1% of male youth engage in unauthorized sexual activity with female staff. 3% of male youth engage in unauthorized sexual activity with both male and female staff. This merely reflects the proportions of gay and straight males in juvenile detention centers and the fact that even people in detention centers like to have sex. Also noteworthy, as a result of the high rate of staff sexual misconduct reported in the NSYC-1, 10.3%, new items were added to the NSYC-2 questionnaire to better understand the circumstances surrounding incidents. Youth were asked a series of questions related to their relationship with the facility staff prior to sexual conduct. Among victims of staff sexual misconduct, nearly two-thirds said that staff told them about their personal life outside of work. 69.1% treated them like a favorite or better than other youth. 63.6% or gave them a special gift that the staff would not have given to most other youth. 62.3% almost half 49.2% said the staff member gave them pictures or wrote them letters. Nearly a third, 29.8%, said that the staff member contacted them in other ways when the staff member was not at the facility. More than a third, 36.7%, said youth gave the staff member pictures of themselves. And more than a quarter, 28.1%, said youth gave the staff member a special gift. When youth were asked who initiated the sexual contact, 36.4% said that the facility staff always made the first move. 17.4% reported that the youth always made the first move. And 46.3% said that sometimes the facility staff made the first move and sometimes the youth did. Youth were also asked to describe the sexual relationship with staff. Nearly half, 46.3%, said the incident was usually just sexual. An estimated 40.1% said the sexual contact was more like friends with benefits. And 13.6% said they really cared about each other. Among the 840 youth who experienced staff sexual misconduct without force, 5.1% reported the involvement of a male staff member, 2.7% involved male staff only, and 2.4% involved both male and female staff. So, the 95% that you cite is of male youth who experienced sexual misconduct involving female staff without force. Demon, I'm giving you 24 hours to remove from the internet all libelous representations of me as a rape apologist, a victim blamer, a pedophile, and other such falsehood and innuendo that your site has irresponsibly allowed to be published or otherwise propagate. That includes your slanderous video on A Voice for Men. Please acknowledge receipt of this message immediately.